Alrighty. Well, welcome to another episode of Ink Transfer Drawing with Mark Zimmerman. My name is Mark Zimmerman. I'm brought to you by the good people at Sanford Arts. What I just did was finish putting a layer, thin layer of ink on a piece of plexiglass, a sheet of plexiglass. Then I'm going to drop a sheet of paper on top of that ink. Kind of on the face of it seems like a funny thing to do, doesn't it? I'm going to tape it down and then I'm going to draw and rub on the back of that paper, which is what you're looking at. That's going to transfer ink to the front, which is face down right now. And I'm going to end up with an ink transfer drawing. The ink is inside a rectangle of tape. And I can poke this pen into that corner and feel the edge of the tape. And this tells me where I need to do my drawing. I need to draw on top of that ink. It also gives me nice borders too if I don't mess them up anyway. Um, I'm going to put some tulips in a vase. Big vase. And I think I'm going to start right here. There's a cool little shape, huh? One more little petal back here. Put a little shadow there, and a little shadow there, and a little shadow here, a little shadow here. Not much shadow, I want to save some, uh, oh I need another line here. And then I get a I'm going to put a bridge in there because I want to reach this. If I set my hand down or touch the back of that paper in any way, I transfer ink. And I don't want to transfer any ink right there, so I'm going to use that little bridge. Um, that flower seems to be on a stalk. Uh, I seem to have another Kind of a cool shape here. And I'm going to grab that bridge again. I might be grabbing that bridge quite a bit for this drawing. Stick another tulip out here. And before I get too carried away with that tulip, I got excited I wanted to draw the tulip. There's another stem or leaf, I suppose, is what it really is, isn't it? Yeah, and I can put that stem in here.
just a touch of a shadow here and here and here. Let's see here. And a tulip right up in here, a flower head. A stem. I'm looking at a photograph. I know a little bit about tulips. I could draw those childlike tulips that we all learned to draw in grade school without a photo, but to really draw tulips I need a, something to look at. So I'm, I am looking at a photograph here. Another stem. Hmm. Got a puppy in the studio to with me today. She's banging around over on the other side. I can't tell what she's up to. So I might have to call her back here. <laughs> she's a pretty good pup. She's probably not doing anything she's not supposed to do. We've pretty well puppy proofed the studio at this point. She's caused most of the trouble she's been in. And artists always like it when things are in odd numbers. So here's our fifth flower. And that comes on a stem as well. And leaf here. And a little leaf. And this leaf just gets a little, and let's just bring that back. Looks like it. Bring this over and up a little bit and back. Top of my vase. Bring it down just a touch.
And this could be pretty dark. That's inside the vase. I don't see much light coming out of there ever. Same thing over here. I can't reach across, so again, I'm going to use that little bridge. Here's the pup. She just came to lay on her bed. What a good girl, Cleo. Cleo's a little German Shepherd pup, and she's a sweetie. And it's hot today out here in the Black Hills, so she's kind of not feeling very energetic. She's waiting for the, the cool of evening to show up here. Scribbling in some little shadows. Um, maybe I should put this on something. Let's let's go ahead and just get a really straight edge here. Put it on a table. Now I can transfer ink simply by touching it too. So I'm putting a little pressure on the back of the paper, pushing it down into that ink, and that transfers just a touch of ink. Put a shadow down there on the table. I guess it's sitting on a table. Uh, Let's grab another ruler too, and I want one. I want a vertical line right at three inches. Kind of fussy about my geometry. No, I don't want it at three. <laughs> it's a pretty inconvenient place when it comes to the edge. It's right here. Three is right, right there. So let's do. That's a better spot. One and seven eighths is also a magical number. And I'm going to make that a double line just because I want people to find it. Kind of the corner of a room, maybe. I don't know why you'd have a double line for a corner of a room, but, but I do. I think I just bumped the tripod. Are we still in the same place? Pretty much, anyway. Huh? I don't bumped it again. I'll quit that. I'm going to put a shadow up here. And just a little shadow there. So let's take a peek. See what happened underneath there. It was kind of Surprising things happen underneath. Huh. That's kind of weird. I guess I didn't press very hard down here. Maybe I'm going to press a little harder. Transferred some ink, but boy, not very much. Let's take another peek. Yeah, okay. I think I need a little more ink on my plate. It's part of the problem. But that turned out all right. Here we go. Way cooler than the, uh, than the um, ballpoint pen drawing on the back side, huh? Let's get a little yellow out. And let's kind of paint some highlights. I 
These are going to be red tulips and these are going to be green stems and leaves. But I'm going to put some highlights on them too. I want some yellow. Probably should have somewhere else that yellow shows up. Let's just put a little highlight right here too. On the off chance that I want to do a wash, which might come up when I get to the background, I'm going to put a little board in underneath, a little cardboard board. Back, back that with something. So I did highlights, five highlights. I probably have shadows. So let's put some shadows on the leaves in places. And I think I'm going to put one more little yellow highlight here too. So I'm back to yellow. Put it on that top of that vase. I'm going to make it a blue vase. So. Blue vase with a red stripe. How's that? There's that highlight. Let that stay kind of bright and light. There's where I'm going to have a stripe. Less light shines here where the vase is kind of tipped out. Spread that out a little more. There we go. I did say a red stripe, but I kind of want that red to have more than just red in it. There we go. So, a little bit of purple. I want to check to see how dark that purple is. I got some scratch paper. I think maybe I'm going to make that purple a little... I'm going to eyedropper. I'm going to give it a couple of squirts of water. Make it a little bit more transparent. So, purple highlights. Looks like I picked up quite a bit of blue. Maybe I better rinse that out. It's getting to be kind of funny looking. It's going to get better looking, don't worry. So 
So I've got yellow and purple on those flowers. And blue and yellow on the leaves. I'm going to come back with I'm mixing up a kind of a lighter, a little bit lighter green. Lighter means for watercolor painters very often just means adding water. So I'm adding water. And I'm going to go right over blue and right over yellow. And the yellow and blue become highlights and shadows on green stems. Pick some paint up over there where I don't, where I had too much. Bring it over here where I need a little more. So there's a puddle I don't need. I'll pick that up and put it over here. There's a puddle I don't need. So I just keep putting it where I need it and taking it away where I have too much of it. Okay, so just same thing with red, basically. And leave the purple kind of looking kind of purple and that yellow looking kind of yellow and kind of smooth it out, blend it together a little bit with red. Might leave little bits of especially the yellow showing in places. A little more paint would be nice. There we go. And one last flower. Get my big brush out and do some background. I'm going to tip it and let gravity work for me. So I'm going to start on this end and let that watercolor just run downhill. I've already established where I have a shadow. I'm just going to paint right over that. And it'll still be darker than where I don't have a shadow. So I drew the shadow instead of painting the shadow. I did both painted and drawn shadows up on the... Getting fussy. Sorry. So again, using gravity to move that paint. And adding quite a bit of water. Just barely tinting this. OK, 
come back and get those little spaces when I don't have much paint in my brush like now. Kind of a light taupe colored wall. Give my brush a good rinse. Look to see if there's anything I want to get rid of. Some of that dark, get rid of that before it dries. I sign them in pencil and um, I think I'll just call this Blue Vase. Sign it. Zimmerman. 2020 and I hope you had fun watching the creation of blue vase it is available free um, so if you want to help yourself you can go home with blue vase and you can watch the creation of it too alrighty